Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiakos FC and Greek football. The first day of training is when I realized, oh, this is why they win the league every year. When I, I spoke with Kevin, if I'm going to sign or no for Olympiakos, I say, you are crazy good deal, like my friend. I can't speak, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Inbom Huang Show. I, I mean, Gate 7 International by the fans, for the fans. Well... We already revealed who we're going to be talking about a lot tonight, isn't it? My God. I mean, we knew he was good. Anybody that watched the, the deep dive scout report that we did, wasn't no surprise to us. All the reporters in Greece were saying that he wasn't going to play today. He wasn't ready. We told you yesterday he's in our predicted lineup, and there he was today. We're going to talk more about Huang. We're going to talk more about Olibiagos' performance today. Labro Sirmos is here with me again. We're back. Labro, what are you saying, man? Uh, what am I saying? I'm tired. I'm super tired. Um, that's what I'm saying. I've, I'm a bit drained. It's been a long day. Um, the game was, was something. The game was something. Step by step, making progress. Um, yeah. You know, Huang was made me realize what football is supposed to look like it's been so long watching these games and it's just so bad and then you watch huang play football and you're like this is why i love this game this is why this game is magical and then on his goal too the way he kind of fainted his body made it look like he was going on to the right and just hit it with the left and you're like oh my god Oh my God! You know what I mean. Just it's, miss uh, having that type of player, man. And no, you know it, what? it's like, incredible. He, it's incredible. He inspired me. He inspired me. I've got my Asian yeah. drink, like my yuzu here. It's not South Korean; it's Japanese, but it's the closest I could get. So yeah. I'm drinking that in his honor tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, before we get into things, guys, as usual, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Keep up to date with all things Olympiagos. Hit the like button spread the love get more libiagos fans from all over the world to come and join this community right here also as well big shout out to our sponsor bet us if you guys like betting you can go to betus.com.pa and you can put a promo code gate 7 intl when you deposit your first deposit you will get 125 percent boost so if you put 100 bucks on there you will immediately get 225 just by using the code GATE7INTL. And now that that's out of the way, I mean, oh should God. we kind of recap very quickly, like the, the the game, what happened? I mean, formation, first of all, we we said, like, we got it right, but for, but for Masuras, everyone was expecting Masuras to kind of grit his teeth, or we were saying maybe he'd play with, with injection, Today, like, you know, everyone's like, there's no way Masuras is missing this game and Masuras didn't play. And we had to, yeah, we had to put up with another 90 minutes of, was it 90 minutes of almost no, 90 it, minutes of Lazar and Jelovic yeah. on the wing? Um, but, uh, but yeah, the one thing a lot of people were kind of commenting on social media was no Greeks, not a single Greek in the lineup. You know, we've got to kind of decide in the end whether or not, you know, we like having players like Masuras, Manolas, Socrates or whatever in, in the team. It's it, For me, it's kind of, it is sad that we don't have any Greek players. It is sad that the, the president did say he dreamed one day of having 11 players from the academy or like, you know, academy players breaking into the team. But, but I think we're very far away from that. Um, but, but like you said, we're, we're seeing, we're seeing signs, yeah. signs of improvement. And should we should we put this up real quick? The chat is now talking about. Look at this donation from Alexander. Jesus Christ! Forty nine ninety nine, forty nine U S dollars and ninety nine cents. That's incredible. No comment too, Alexander. Thank you so much. That's 
the largest donation we've ever had. And that's going to be a real help for a lot of things that we're going to be doing in the future. Thank you so much. Um, Thank That's you, massive. Alexander. I swear, yeah. Alexander, like we don't even we don't know him, so it's not just somebody we. Yeah, know. no, this isn't bucks. Alexander. I haven't even seen your name commented in the chat as well. That is incredibly nice. Thank you so much for. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, we will use those donations. I swear to God, and we not even not to put it in our pocket, but to make this channel yeah. the best thing that that we can make it. Uh, we've talked about making T-shirts and stuff like that, merchandise. Uh, as we as yeah. we continue to grow, help us keep growing, guys. Um, we're we're over one thousand eight hundred subs. Community keeps growing. It's great to have so many people following from from all over the world, from Greece. Uh, we received a comment the other day, like. Could we have some Greek subtitles as well? We're going to look into that, guys. As we continue to grow, um, we'll 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 keep making. We're going to have like the go. European Parliament the the same time translation. You know, <laughs> if you guys <laughs> maybe that shows You're gonna how, need a few more where we work, where we, what type of work we do, <laughs> but like no one else notices that reference. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh my God! Just I wanted to say a few things. Yesterday's episode, a lot of people were commenting about how depressing I was and how low the mood was. I'm sorry, guys. Like I, I realized afterwards too that was a bit of a depressing one by me. And the job really now is to support the team and Carlos Corberan. Um, yeah, I was sorry for the depressing episode yesterday. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see positives. I'm trying to to raise my spirits as well but it's it's difficult tonight was kind of what i've been wanting to see for so long and that's some sort of progress and that was all huang it was also a bit of yeah no one else really now i'm thinking about it no it was really i i i agree mate sorry sorry to cut you off and i keep yeah i was just trying to think of like another player i was like oh who else no but as soon as he came off mate It was disaster. It was as soon as it came one. off, you just he he made. Uh, I I want I really do want to talk about him more. Like, um, should we let's let's go through some of the comments because yeah, I can't so like, I can't keep I can't keep up with this. But, but like, like Oleg Rayupchuk, I thought was a positive tonight, guys. Like, I'm not even trolling. I'm not even trolling anyone. It's uh, I'm not joking whatsoever. I thought he was quite good. Was good tonight. Um, I thought Jan and Villa was all right, was poor on the first goal, maybe came out yeah. of position. Um, Kunde rocketed a shot off the post. I thought Avia was quite quiet as well tonight. You there was more action Avi. on the left. There was more yeah, a lot of on action the left, on the left. I thought Zinker Nagel's finally like maybe starting to show he's integrating into the team slowly but surely. You still want to see more, but. Um, We'll see. We'll see. Um, it was just more so you you saw a player like Huang and you're like, oh, maybe this is all that it takes. You know, we see we see a few passes, we see a few runs and and whatnot. I don't know the the there obviously is still some poor elements of the team, really poor elements of the team. But you know, it's step by step and. Sunday night, the uh, the team's going to have me in the stadium, so they're going to be pushed on even more. They're going to hear my voice and be like, oh, I've heard that voice on the podcast. I'm going to push <laughs> on harder, and they're going to fucking beat, who is it, Pasian in a 5-0 or some shit. Um, that's how I want to want to see it. But yeah, the left side I thought was good tonight, which is surprising because it was pretty invisible against Lavia, if I remember correctly. No, it's true because... I mean, you had a lot more, a lot more things happening while while Huang was on the pitch, and I thought the chemistry between Zinkanagel and Oleg was much improved today. You saw some one twos, like it was a one two yeah. that that led to the goal down the left hand side. Oleg plays it into to Zinkanagel, one touch, and then he's in a good position. He's made a nice pass to to Huang, and then you know, like you said, he made that little feint and kind of touched it inside into the box so with his right and then took it was, first time oh it's my like God. two two touches mate it was just ball coming across his body and then right foot boom in front of the defender and then first time with his left foot just brilliant it's like a boxing move mate it's just yeah. like like jab 
punch. It this was, is gonna uh, this fantastic. is gonna sound a bit strange, but I feel like his body type and the way he moves remind me a bit of Andre Martins. Do you remember like he's like short and small? I don't know. It's the I, low uh, center of gravity. It was the low, but like it rem- we haven't had a player like that in so long who I think is like more a central midfielder, maybe a ten. He's like an eight slash ten. Yeah, like he's a a tweener and he's small, but he's crafty, has a good pass. I was like, who is this reminding me of? Because OG fans of the podcast will always know I try to make a comparison. Is he really he's really 180 centimeters? He looks so small on the pitch. Like maybe it's because he's so light. I saw him uh, there was a photo with the shirt off and he looked tiny. He looked so skinny. So maybe that was it. I, I don't know. Um, I just no, don't think he was that big, but maybe he is. I don't know. B- b- because a lot of people are asking in the chat, like he. Uh, okay, let, let's let's just talk about him because yeah, like every, let's just, every, he's on the thumbnail. He's like all we're talking yeah, about. Like everybody just, wants to talk about about Huang. So let's just let's just deal with this then. So a lot of people are asking, like, is he injured? Like, is it, what's going on? He spoke after the match in his post-match comments and he said, uh, you know, he was asked at the end, he says, no, no, he's not injured. He said he felt a bit of fatigue. He said he felt a bit stiff. He said he wasn't 100% going into the game and he thought that somebody else could come on and, and do a better job than, than he could he could do for the rest of the game. So he, he, he very clearly said, like, he's not injured. And, I, and just because I'm, we're focusing on his post-match comments now, there's some other things that I want to convey in, in case people didn't watch his his uh or listen to his post-match comments it. so they one of the questions he was asked was um does he feel fully adapted and the answer was like a clear no so normally you know they ask that question to football yeah, like, like oh, yeah you know i've it. been here and like we're getting on blah 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 it was like just like he was like no i'm not fully adapted um and he said that the more listen to this so the more games i play the more the fans will love me. I'm sure of that, what is what he said. What I so it's just it, the incredible, incredible confidence in his in his ability. Um that that really that really struck me, like the confidence yeah. in, in what he conveyed. Yeah. yeah, no, I it showed on the pitch. Um I I don't know. I, I thought he was fantastic. I I really do. He took a took all the words away and also i was surprised about how high he was playing i was listening to um to adi's deep dive and they seemed to make it seem like he didn't play that high up on the pitch he was playing almost when they were pressing he was that guy who was pressing like a second off of el arabi yeah Yeah, you you heard adi talk about that role in the corberan system um and kunde's been doing that and you would think with his running um, he would continue doing that, but he didn't. So it was a bit surprising, a bit surprising, but I'm really excited for the player. Um, I hope he's okay. I hope he doesn't play Sunday. Or if he does, he plays like 20 minutes off the bench or something, and we win, and everyone's happy. And Conrad de la Fuente scores a goal for the first time in his career. And um, yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, aren't we? We're going to talk about Conrad Delphine. We can, we can talk about that because we had a little back and forth after the Yeah, game. me and Costa were joking. Um, well, I'm the one who said it. Like, I know this is harsh. I know this is bad. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, let, 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 let's talk about, let's talk about let's, Conrad okay. afterwards. Like, for the for the 10 minutes that we saw him, we're going to talk about Conrad de la Fuente. I, I, we'll talk about him I can't later. believe they signed this guy. I, like, actually can't believe Okay. Ella, 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 ella. Stamata, okay. stamata. So like, um, just bringing up some more comments. Uh, Book says, hello, Costa Labro. Libiacos was lucky in the first half, but in second hit in, in counter-attack and lost many chances. Yeah, Mate, between, was so be, bad tonight. Oh my be, God. Between the 50th Never. and the 60th minute, we should have been three or four one up, I felt. Yeah. There was the chance. There was a chance with Rogelovic. I think El Arabi played the ball over the top and he couldn't connect with it, yeah. either with his head or his foot. Just nothing there. And then... El Arabi the, the cut back, you know, the cutback where he just fumbled it into the goalkeeper, and you're like, wait, what? I'd uh, never what? seen anything like he the ball wasn't even um juggling, like the ball was played on the ground and he brought it up. Like his control was so bad, he like brought it up, and you're like, wait, what? 
How do you, what? No, what are you doing? I was on the floor, mate. Like, literally, the I first know. chance I was screaming, and then, the, 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 no, literally, like, my wife was downstairs watching me, and I, I was literally at one point, I threw the chips across the room, and then I just kind of fell on the floor because I just couldn't believe that we weren't winning the match. <laughs> it, it, honestly, mate, it could have been no, from 45th like, minute to 55th minute, not even the 60th minute, you were like, we had four, we were all chances, over them. like clear cut chances, and and El Arabi, the one where he was offside too, and he missed the goal by like yeah. a whole goal. It was like, oh my fucking god, man! Oh my god, it was so bad. Um, yeah, no, it, really, it, we need a striker out, so bad. Oh they, they, they didn't, they didn't do much. I have to say, like in 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 the second half, I mm-hmm. thought we, I thought we contained them quite well and like had decent control of the it's game. Just, we have decent control, but we're like gaff merchants. Like that goal they scored that they ruled offside. Oh yeah, like, like how the, the fuck was that even a ch- like? How did that happen? Like that was incredible, and and he wasn't offside too. I saw the replay, and they were like, uh, the the guy on Cosmote was like, oh. Uh, Lucky here, Olympiak was some shit. It was, it was, uh, it was a few inches offside. Huh? So that was a really yeah, good call. Was... Like we, we wasn't got it call. looked onside from the video? No, no, no. no. He, he was, he was off. He was clear. Okay. He was off, but it was, it was, it was like close, but it was quite tight. Yeah, you, you're, you're tight. just like, for fuck's sake, is that gonna happen next week? And we're gonna go out. We're gonna have all these chances, and then it's like, fucking Ba clears the ball off of Oleg Rubchik's head and it goes straight to the strike. You know what I mean? Like, you can't say that won't happen with us because it's just like, you see it all the time. It's like Cissé, like, boots the ball and it hits someone in the back and it's an own goal. It's like, ah, oh, fuck's sake. Like, but that's, I mean, that's kind of what the goal was like. It was, it was into, it, it was a oh my comedy God, the goal of was errors a again. again. It was a comedy yeah. of errors. Like, and Villar's kind of, I don't know what he's done outside the box. He's kind of got caught in possession and then a shot's taken by by Cal, and then it it hits Cisse's foot, and it rebounds straight to the striker, and he just slots it in calmly, it's and it's one nil. Yeah. And I met mate at one nil. I don't know about you guys in the chat or you labber, but at one nil, I just thought, oh my god, here we go again. And it's like we can't we we can't catch a break. It seems it's like no, I was pretty confident we'd bring it back. To be honest, I wasn't very upset. I was like. Right. I don't know why, but I was like, these guys are really bad. Just like with Bratislava, I think uh, Martial texted. He was like, every stage we've played a shittier team. It's like Maccabi's the best team, Slovan second worst, and then it goes, uh, uh, what is it? Apollon. Yeah, they're, they're really That's bad. That's the team today. that we were playing today. Yeah. <laughs> I almost went Ammonia. I was like, oh, Ammonia, what Ammonia? And Jesus Christ, it was so bad. But they were really poor. Like they they gave us nothing. Um, I, I I don't know. I I don't know. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. We need a striker so bad. Hassan. Oh my god. Fuck. Hassan, Hassan came on and I was like, bring Hassan on. We need a change. El Arabis doesn't have it. And then uh, Hassan comes on and you're like, redo the sub reverse you know like the uno reverso card you're like reverso like ice hockey is like yeah you're like it up. Br- bring him back in fuck no mm-hmm. not hassan it was almost like uh the penalty when he took mama Kane off after like playing for 15 minutes it was like bring hassan off for like valbuena or something after 15 minutes it was so bad um but no it, we need a striker really bad i honestly i want to say yeah. our best striker this season has been uh Masuras and extra time against Slovan Bratislava. Like, oh man. I mean, I don't know, mate. Like, we talked about this early on in the year about, what was it? December 2021, they were already talking about whether El Arabi was going to renew his contract. They were already having discussions at the time, and yeah. then they were and they weren't. And I think we 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 said quite early on that the club needs to be looking for another option there. Uh, sure. Ideally, we shouldn't be paying El Arabi two million a year to or two two plus million a year, and now he, he's got a fantastic contract and he's paid to bury those opportunities that he got today and he didn't he's do here it forever. He's never leaving. He's yeah. never leaving. If 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 they don't if they don't see that. 
And I know people say in August he's not good. It happens every August. And, but still, like you can't you can't rely on El Arabi and Hassan as your as your two strikers. So then it's needs not. To be, yeah. Then it's to not be 2019 anymore. Everyone, it's been three years. Yeah. Um, we, and that's no disrespect. That's no disrespect. No, 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 no. It's just how it is, man. It's just like in any club that there, there's turnover. In order to remain competitive, you've got to freshen things up. Yeah. Uh, and ideally, I would have said, like, dude, thank you so much. Like, give him a. F you know, he, yeah. he 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 made his money. Like he he earned every penny that we gave him over the years and he was been a fantastic servant. He's still here and I'm sure he'll score goals, but I'm yeah. also sure he'll, he will frustrate us this season and we do need a striker. We can't just yeah. let that. Well, he's going to frustrate us for two more seasons, Costa. He's here for two more years, not just Yeah, one, so. okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Like We'll get there when we get there, but... Yeah, um, we'll see. Because he signed a two-year contract doesn't mean that somebody might not pick him up next summer, but I'm not getting ahead of myself because... Yeah, no, the one, the we one need guarantee... him right now, to be honest. Yeah. We we have nothing else, you know, like Abu Bakr Kamara has the, the deep strain, you know, the... <laughs> I, I, I almost forgot he existed. I was thinking yeah, about it. Like, we don't have yeah. another striker. It's like, oh, wait, I completely forgot he existed until you mentioned his yeah. name just now. And it's he's got, you know, when they say like um, the deep strain, how do they say it in Greek? Vathia, whatever. And you're like, there's no coming back from that. You know, like, you know, when they say it's deep, you know, you're like, oh, shit, he's out for like two months. <laughs> so that's like your best uh, picture. Like when they say the deep strain, you're like, oh, fuck. Uh, so he he's probably <laughs> I have no idea when he's going to come back, you know, so. So I mean, what are you going to do? Your only other option is, what's his name? Dennis Al... 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 Aliagic. Al Al Aliagic. Al 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 or however it's pronounced. Yeah. What the fuck it is called? Dennis. Actually, we can't say Dennis because not an enforced as a Dennis as well. So we'll mix him up. So Dennis Ali Jajaji. Um, somebody... <laughs> Some some somebody made a fr from an opposing team made a joke at halftime that was like, "I'll oh, be careful, Olympiacos fans, because if Juan keeps playing like this, he'll go to <laughs> Nottingham." No, to I was thinking as we were playing, I was like watching Huang Junior play so good. I was like, "Fuck, we need to bring Huang Senior from Bordeaux," because Bordeaux. Huang Junior, okay, our Huang is how old? He's like 25, 26. I'm I'm not sure. I, I can and check. And Huang out. Senior from Bordeaux is like 30. We bring Huang times two. Olympiacos is not stoppable. I'm like I I'm so excited with Huang. I want a second Huang on the team. I'm. It's Me too. Like, a good version of Kamara, like for the first time, you're just like, maybe, let's go. Like, we're maybe the other one was watching and was like, oh, I'm gonna go. Yeah, no, I need like Huang 2.0 to be over there in Bordeaux and just be like, fuck it, I'm coming too. Like, yeah, and I, I just want like every player named Huang now because I'm just like, okay, they must know how to play football. Like, you get that name, yeah. and Babi Sturlas is like, <laughs> you know. South Korea, no man. Like, I mean, they they've got a good national team, mate. No, like, it's not they a know joke. how to play like, football. All, like, uh, yeah. They, I mean, they're, they're all like solid technical players. They play, they play the ball on the ground. What and it's it? like you said too. They run and they're they're fit. They're like they're very professional too. You can tell that by the way he was playing too. He's very professional. Like, he can it, read it's not the like game. It's not like this game, bullshit like... where they come to Greece and they're like, oh, shit, the good weather, glifada, like, let's enjoy, let's go for drinks. Like, I bet you don't catch Huang over at fucking Nalu and Akanthus in glifada and bullshit. Like, literally, I go there. I went to Nalu once and I, like, ran into three Olympiacos players. Like, you should not be at Nalu. Nalu, like, the fucking little bar is a place for like 23 year olds to go and like meet a right, girl. Thanks. It's not yeah. for like Olympiacos players, okay? So let's just put that out there, you know? It's uh yeah. Huang, I forbid you from going to Nalu the bar, <laughs> Akanthus, whatever those shit is like by the water, you're not allowed uh whatsoever. They need so. they need to have a little bit of fun as well, but not too much fun. Yeah, though. but not Huang. Like... Huang gets like go on the jet ski on the water, but he's not going to the bar. Like he gets to play water sports and like do fun things, but he's not drinking. And this is a good comment. 
would I go to a place if it wasn't cool? No, there is exactly. cool. It is yeah. a cool place. They do hookah now as well. They do. They do. That's yeah. one of the reasons I like it as well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's good that we finally saw a professional footballer says, look at my eyes, <laughs> DC. No, I mean, look, uh, I, I, I said it yesterday. This guy's come in from abroad, right? He he hasn't followed much of preseason. He hasn't followed much of preseason. So Sorry, it's I like almost spit out my tea reading this. <laughs> Who comes up with this stuff, man? (laughs) I was sipping my tea there and then I almost spit it out on the computer. That's so bad. That's so bad. It's an interesting comment from Yorgos, boss to YT. For those that remember, same goal scored by Olibiagos Benfica, Brazilian Diogo. Are you talking about the one where he dinked it through the defenders, ran round them and slotted it into the, the near post? Um, so, somewhat, yeah. I remember he took a nice touch that that went through the defenders, and then he went round them and slotted it in. That was a very, very nice goal uh, by Diogo. Just some reminiscing there, trip down memory lane. Um, I mean, what was I saying? I was saying, I was saying yesterday that this is a player that can that can kind of dictate the tempo of the game. Like he can control the ball very well. He can keep the ball in tight spaces and turn and, and, and face the opposing goal and, and get us away on the counter-attack. He, he can play the ball forward. And how many times did we see that today where he got the ball into feet? And the first thing he did was either already control the ball so that he was already facing the opponent's goal. Yeah, he wasn't stopping the ball when looking at our goalkeeper he was turning with the ball and already he had he knew where the where the players were and this is 10 days in huh? he's playing these through balls to Rajelovic in the second half <laughs> Rajelovic I get no un- idea what un- to do <laughs> no no but un- unbelievable like his his vision and ability to start those counter attacks the one touch passes there was like a flick that he tried to do that it, that didn't come off he just like the, the touches were incredible and we hadn't it's just been so long since we've seen something yeah. it's like, it, like that. reminded you you're just like holy shit like Pedro Martin's ball has destroyed our brains we're just like oh my god real football like we haven't seen like one touch pass okay we've been trying to do it with Corbett on but it's just like holy shit Wong can actually do it and has been doing it for a while so I don't know it's it's all you all you need to talk about it's, i still can't get over that freaking north korea the real talents are hidden there oh god, what a co- oh my god i can't believe someone came up with that i sorry but um, um i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna drop the uh the link in the chat one more time guys uh, the lines are open so if you guys want to get on via video or via audio if you don't want to show your face you can just like yeah you can come in audio. and you can you can talk on audio no no, no problem yeah so the, the link's there guys come and tell us your thoughts about the for game the people today. who were upset with me for yesterday's podcast for being too negative but look, we can have a conversation I'm El always open to yeah Ah, here, here, we, here we go. Oh, labros pilo haruma no soy que momento que pitelos minas meta. For those that try Guys, translation, uh, KNA 03 says, yeah, the Labro looks pretty happy. He's not yeah. he's not pissed for once. You guys want to know why I'm real happy? It's not because of Huang. Okay, a bit about Huang, but the bags are being packed. I'm off to the home, the hometown, going to Greece. I'm going to be in Pagrati, okay. the neighborhood, can have. Uh, Fredo Cappuccino, Fredo Espresso. For yes, and visit friends and family. So I'm excited for that. Getting out of rainy, uh, rainy goddamn uh, Brussels, you know. So I'm excited. You, you, you know what? I'm. Uh, I hope you don't mind me saying this on your behalf, Labro. But so Labro already said that he's going to be in Greece, um, planning to go to the Paz game and the Apollo. I'm going to be game. at every single game. I'll be if you guys want to. Uh, I'll I'll be at uh, visiting Nalu. Maybe I will. <laughs> Maybe I will one day for a beer or something. But go more importantly, me. I'll be at the games. If you guys want to, yeah. if you guys go to the stadium, Fan I will camp. be at the stadium for Paz Yanina. Next week with Apollo, I will be there as well. 
And I will be there when we play Ionic Course, I think. Ionic Course in, what is that, three weeks? I'll be uh, for all three games. So feel free to uh, to stop by, say hello. If you're around the stadium, I'll probably, I don't know, usually I go for a coffee or something or a beer, depending on the time. So feel free to drop by and say hello. Yeah, it depends, um, yeah. Go, yeah. go, go and meet Labro outside the stadium or whatever. Yeah. Do some camp, some fan cam for the yeah. for the vlogs that we do while while we're out there. So, yeah. send some messages either to Labro directly or to our Gate Seven Intl Instagram, and and Labro can can yeah. check that out. In yep. the meantime, we have somebody that's that can join us, Costa Sarinopoulos. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, sas pediati kante. Kalispera. Kalispera. Από πού τηλεφωνείς, Κώστα? Μίσιγεν. Μίσιγεν. Ναι. Welcome to the show. Thank you for, thank you for joining us. Of course, yeah. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so what I wanted to say, though, I, Kunde, like, I think he, he's trying to like, prove Martins wrong. I like what he's doing. Um, and him and Huang, I think, can be a good part, partnership like, moving forward. I see that he's – I think he has a mission – because uh, in the last episode, you mentioned like you mentioned that Martins was didn't give him a chance. He was kind of pissed about it. So I, I like that kind of energy. Like he brings energy to the field, and we need that kind of aggression. I think. Yeah, no, I think that's good. And now that we're bringing up Kunde, I know this is it's going to pain everyone to hear this. You know, a player who would probably do quite well with Huang in the team if instead of Lazar Angelovic. It was Henry Onyakuru getting those balls. Would Olympiacos be better off now with Henry Onyakuru with a new, uh, with a new uh, what's it called, new manager? I don't know. Uh, we were debating it earlier. I think so. Would Henry Onyakuru be better than Conrad than De La Fuente with a second chance in the team? Maybe I don't know. Um, you know what hurts? I mean, Bruma. Like we were debating. Like I don't know if he's good enough, but he's been like. Him and Masuras are like the best wingers. Not that they're quality, like they're like top quality, like Champions League starter quality. But compared to Randejovic or I don't even know who else, um, yeah. I think Bruma was a mistake, like not, like not keeping him. At the time of, I was like, oh, Bruma sucks. Thank God he's gone. But after seeing what we've seen in the past two years, maybe, maybe. If you look uh, at the money that that they were asking, it was what six million. But you thought maybe they could negotiate it down to five, and then they gave five for on Yakuru. So you're like, okay, maybe that was maybe that was a mistake in retrospect. But but okay, that's that's something we can talk only after the fact. Right, and like another question I want to ask is like, mm -hmm. what do you guys think about the league? Like, you think it's for sure? Because I think it's going to be a lot tighter this year. Like, I think we got goals will pull through just because. Everyone else is like pretty. Yeah, but it's it's a good we're going, question. We're going down to the level a little bit. It's a good question. A lot of people have been asking us about the league. Are you worried about the league? Um, I don't know. You never know until you see like what is it, ten, fifteen episodes. He, I don't know, right? Like I can't, I can't really say how worried I am. I will. Who was it? Was it Stell last night who said Ike looked really, um, really good? I don't know. Maybe they're better. They signed Vida, who played in World Cups, blah, blah, blah. Um, Panathinaikos maybe has a better team this year, but I also think Panathinaikos doesn't have a, a very deep bench, so they have a few injuries. Like, let's say Sporar gets injured, or we saw when Bart Schenkefeld got injured in the... Uh, conference league how big of a disaster it became for them so i don't know if they have the depth but like again do we have the depth do we have quality i don't know it just seems like olipakos has this mentality if they win everywhere they go but then teams like ayak and panathinaikos they'll go to let's say yanina and they'll drop points or lamia and olipakos almost always picks up points so i don't know we'll see We'll see. Costa, what do you think? And Juan cured Labros' depression. Just look at my <laughs> just this yeah. coming up here. Sorry, sorry. Look I, at my eyes. He says Juan cured Labros' depression. I don't Amazing. know if it's Juan or the fact that I get to have get to have a beer, like, I don't know, in the, uh, the center of Athens tomorrow night. I don't know. Like, maybe that. 
I get to go to a bar in some square. It's a bit of both. I don't know. Bit of both. A bit of both, maybe. A bit of both. Let, let, let me tackle that question as well about the league. Honestly, mate, every year I feel like I've, you know, we watch the moves and signings that the the other opponents make in Greece. And you think, oh, you know, they'll be better this season. And every season it's just the same. So I, I did hear from Stel, the, the guy that was on yesterday, our good friend, uh, the Ammonia, that does the Ammonia podcast at No Choftes. He he saw the Ajax team and he told me like they look aggressive, they look fit, they've got a good manager. So Ajax has got a good manager. Almeida, for anyone that watched uh, Mexi watches Mexican football, had his team playing very, very well, good football. Pineda looks like a very good player. And uh, also the stadium, we we shouldn't yeah. like undershoot that. Like there, almost every game will be sold out because they're in the new stadium. The novelty of that could there's drive them. You know, there's yeah. a lot of hype around that. Like Concept Calcio just mentioned it in the chat as well. Like I think that's going to play a huge factor. I think season tickets wise, they're almost like the whole stadium season ticket almost for this year because people are so excited. So yeah, I mean, Panathinaikos has got a good manager. I think I mean, he has yeah, a he had a good, good record with with Aboel at least, and he has an organized team. And like let let's let's face it, like if you look at Panathinaikos, their team is more gelled than ours for sure. Like we we still don't know what our starting eleven is going to be come September, because I think we talked about this the other day. I think we'll see a flurry of transfers. Once our fate is clear after next Thursday, and we August twenty fifth, I bet you there's going to be signings. Like there's going to be like five signings by August twenty eighth. Like, I hope. Yeah. I hope. I I just think, and as as course I was saying, I I talked about this on last pod, maybe a different pod. Blah blah blah. Who cares? Olympiakos' goal now is just hold on for dear life until this World Cup break. Be like, just hold on. Like make make it to the Europa League and just. Yeah, like be around first place. That sounds crazy. We're only backwards. We want to be in first place. We want to dominate the league. But fuck me, given the given circumstances, we just want to make it to that World Cup break and have and be close. You know, so that that's the way I'm looking at it. We have a second preseason with Carlos Coberan in what is it October November time with the World Cup. Like everyone, just all hands on deck, try to scrap results until then and. Yeah, that's my my look on it, Costa. Costa, what do you think? Can we can we take this across the finish line next week? Do you think we'll go through? I I think uh, it'll be close, but I think we will. Um, mm. I think Masuras is key. We need him because um, Randelovic is not up to par. Um, I think the this, this striker situation scares me though a lot um, because El Arabi is getting older and Hassan's our backup. Like, like you said earlier, like he had his time, but is he? We need to move on, right? And I, I'm a little. I think we should have kept Tequino on until the campaign, the European campaign was over, yeah. if that was possible. Ah, uh, but fuck the guy, like injured himself he, injured he was himself like too. he was like a fucking nutcase too he almost got sent off he was i, I for what i would have done maybe this sounds correct i would have just thrown costa say the name again dennis the check alia gitch alia gitch onto the the squad and just said fuck it like let's just have him there because i don't know uh the striker position like i said costa like our best striker probably Second best strikers, Masuras, at this point during Slovan Bratislava extra time. So, um, I don't know. We'll we'll just have to see. Um, I'm for some reason I feel pretty confident going into next week. I maybe this will kill me because I will be in the building. I'm gonna fucking cry or something when we. I, go I think out. The, the the fans really needed to see. Progress. that improvement again i think today because i think genuinely there, there's kind of two readings on today's game right and one is that the the glass is half empty we didn't win again and uh and then it's the, the glass is half full which is to say 
we showed more signs of improvement. I think every game since Carlos Corberan has come in, we've seen we've seen improvement. We started to see automatismus, like we say in Greek. I don't don't know what the goddamn word is in English, uh, but we started to see signs of a team that knew, you know, the players knew where their teammates were. They were trying to play some one-touch football. We managed to create chances. I didn't look at the stats actually after the game. I'd be we had like six shots, and like three on target for the whole game. So, still progress. Yeah, but it, that's that's all we can ask for right now yeah. is to see signs of improvement every game. And I think we we but saw I think that. This comment's important. Juan looks good, but he isn't Mandalos. Okay, I think that's true. You know, like he's no Mandalos. You know, a real captain to lead lead the team <laughs> that, that's a joke of course that you you should yeah yeah no yeah. i, I... <laughs> but, but i don't think that yeah okay fine maybe my humor is a bit off uh... no how, don't you follow that ike tweet club account on twitter it's so funny it's like it's like, literally like petros mandalos yeah everything yeah never mind yeah we'll see costa who's your favorite player Maybe, maybe not in this team, but like, uh, I mean, uh, how, how old are you, mate? I'm 21. You're 21. Okay. Who, who's your favorite player that you've seen at Olympiacos? Well, I'm, I'm going to be basic. I'm going to say Fortunis or also Jordi. Jordi Dominguez. Dominguez. See, for our generation, I think Jordi Dominguez is like such a pick for me. Like, he's really up there as well because we were too young for Giovanni. Yeah, I'm sorry for Kenneth. Yeah, for a 10, you know, like really like you're playing good football and you have the memories of Troy Dominguez beating Manchester United too, like oh yeah, stuff like that, you know. That for our generation, I think uh I don't know from people like you guys tell us in the comments like for like Olympiacos fans, let's say 18 to what like 25, 26, like no matter what age you are, drop us your favorite player of all time. Yeah. So, I I, I don't know. Chori's in the the thing for, for one of my favorite players ever as well. But yeah, but right now I, I honestly can't pick one. Like, uh, nah. <laughs> yeah, no don't, one. don't don't pick it's don't. Huang, maybe Huang. I don't know. Huang is the new <laughs> favorite. Fuck, say Huang played sixty minutes and everyone's like favorite player is Huang. You know, it's like gosh. Did you did you see the event like the, the standing ovation he got when he came off the pitch? <laughs> it, was like, it took him a minute to get off the pitch because he was clapping for like a minute like before he before he came off. Yeah. But. But no, it's really, really. Can deserved. we talk about the support today? Cyprus, fantastic support. They made a choreo as well. Fantastic support from, uh, from everyone. A lot of Cypriots who were there. A lot of people made the trip from Athens as well. Brilliant. Like the the banner they did as well was was really nice. Um, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. What happened to Christian Tail? Wasn't he supposed to sign two weeks ago and then? Probably waiting to see what competition we'll play. And to yeah. be honest, mate, I'm not too hot on that player. Like, I don't know if he's the type of player that we need to come in and unlock defenses in in Greece. I think he's very, he's a very measured player, like very technical, very good on the ball, like you know, typical Spanish player. But he's not the one that will set the Karaiskagi light. You know, um, I don't know if we can even attract that kind of player. To be honest with you, but I'm. For we me, need to... not. What what we need too as well is a a goal scorer almost because El Arabi it seems like the goals are drying up a bit. Masura Adi produced a chart that basically showed that Masuras and El Arabi crafted all of the goals almost for Olympiacos last season. Um, Tequino too, was it? Tequino too to a lesser extent. Um, like I. I I don't know. I think Christian Teo, from what I understand, him, has quite a good goal record. I don't know. I, I don't, not, I bad. not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Right. It's not like Conrad De La Fuente has never scored a goal in like 50 games. But okay. Um, this is this is interesting. There are a couple of comments here. Um, uh, Yanis Spinos also saying Juan really reminds me of Andre Martins. Yeah, just way, way better. Because you made that comment right at the beginning. And uh, yeah. Angelo... I go to say, is like a more attacking Guillermo. Maybe. 
because so, he can play those really nice balls along the ground, like forward, those forward passes that we don't see enough. That's interesting. So I have a question, guys. If if you if you could uh let's say we only have like three guaranteed signs. Three guaranteed like what positions like, do we need? Striker, central defense, we only pull off three. winger. Yeah, that's pretty spot on. What 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 do you say, Costa? Striker, winger? Striker, winger, and a central defender. Uh yeah. I think we need a keeper too. Yeah. The thing about Vachlik is like sometimes you watch and you're like, can the guy move? It's almost like he has cement feet. It's like you see, I don't know. They had this one shot from distance and it was so far off and he like dived for it. And it was almost like J Jordan Pickford of Everton. It's like in slow motion. It's like, <laughs> and it's like, just move your feet over and pick it up almost, you know? So I don't yeah, know. I just think keepers. No, sorry, sorry. It was lagging. No, no, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just think, yeah, we probably do need a new keeper, but it's like the least of our concerns. Exactly. That's opinion. that's how I like, feel, too. It's like, just give Vachlik one more year. Like, it's the least of our concerns. Mm -hmm. If Olibeko is going to lose games this season, and um, not a lot of them are going to be based off of Vachlik. Right. Um, like, you need a striker. So, personally, I'm all in for Huang Sr. from Bordeaux. Um, and... I don't know. I, I don't know who else. Winger, I have no idea. Like anyone but Conrad De La Fuente. Um, I just want to, I want a winger who can score a goal. Also, Marios Furusai came on for Olympiacos today and looked like a player who didn't do a preseason and who was casted away by the coach. Maybe that wasn't the best decision. Um, he didn't have options though, did he? No, he didn't, but... Is, is Marios Furusai have time to come back into the team? Very nice. Well done, Costa. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just so weird because I feel like our squad is so bloated, but then we have no options. Yes. No, it's like, crazy. It's, 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 That's such a good description of Spum. it. Yeah. yeah. Like, you look, you look to the bench for someone to change the game. It's like... <laughs> like <laughs> but that's it. When, when, when Juan came off, it just sizzled out. Yeah. It's who so did Huang? Loaded. Who came it's on so for loaded. Huang? I don't remember. Who Agibu. Came on? Yeah, like instead of fucking Agibu, can we throw on Valbuena? You know, like that's the thing. It's uh, the the thing with um, the thing with Agibu Kamara. It's like, oh my god, will this ever get better? You know, it's. Uh, I hope. I hope. Um, we'll see. This is this is a good comment. Um, yeah. from alexander again thank you for that very generous donation earlier he yeah. says oh juan it and he was a beast alex he changed the mentality of the players and the, and the style of play i am that's another kind of comment that i noted down just scribbling some notes during the game he was constantly i think particularly after the goal he just wanted the ball wherever the ball was that you just saw he was going towards the ball was like give me the ball give me the ball like, option giving an option to the player every single time and and you could see players were looking for him too like you saw some of the 15 20 yard passes along the ground that Mbila made in the first in the first half to feet for for Juan to take the ball forward um it, it's just I don't it's been a really long time since I've seen a player have that kind of impact for us just come in after basically 10 day, 10 training sessions probably yeah and to have that kind of impact and just everyone yeah. is looking for him and and while that's great it's also just a sign of just oh again what we've yeah. talked about not going to be negative but it's a good thing but it's yeah. we need we need we need more of that it just goes to show like we need those signings like you yeah. like like Costa said uh, we need we need more signings, but no, now we need to get this over the line. It, it's incredible. I saw like Twitter is one of the darkest places. Like Olympiacos, Twitter is like the darkest place you'll ever be. You put like Olympiacos FC hashtag, and you'll be like, oh my god! Like literally, it's just like people like we are all dying, and like our eyes are burning, and we're being tortured. Um, 
guys, it, it's really bad. Like the negativity bred there. Um, but like Huang or, or some guy, this is why I'm bringing up some guy said like, how bad was Martins that like we have forgotten what a good footballer looks like, or just like a footballer with a little bit of style and attacking flair. And the coach wasn't afraid to play him. Like Pedro Martins would have wasted him on the bench, been like, oh, he's too weak. He's not defensive enough. And then he would have started like Mama Ducane. So it's just like, thank God we, we have a coach who, who, who will play him too. So. Let's see. We got a comment from from someone from from Korea. Um, yeah. I, I wish I could read your name out properly, but I can't read that language, unfortunately. It says, hi, I'm from Korea and I've seen Huang on international game. He's not good defensively. Hope he will be given a more attacking role. Absolutely. He, uh, he if, you just, if you just joined us, my friends, um, thank you for subscribing. He had a fantastic game today. Um, an absolute eye-opener. And if you... Only if you just sit here and read some of the comments, you'll you'll understand that. So, um, absolutely fantastic! Thank you for thank you for joining us, and hope to have more more of also, your friends and people from South Korea joining. Costa, I want to I want to ask you. This was a talking point before the game, but like, Emena, me, me or the guest? To to both of both you guys. Of us. Costa times two, as we like to do with Costa Leonos as well. Um, there were no Greek players in the starting 11. And in the whole game, the only Greek player who played was Marios Versailles. Um, what does that say about Olympiakos? Are we wor is that a big problem? What, like, And how does the club fix that? Because if the club had started with Andreas Bukalakis and maybe an injured Yorgos Masuras, um, people would have been like, fuck this. Why are you playing these losers? Blah, blah, blah. Ah, Bukalakis played too. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's right. Um, but like, <laughs> look at this comment. I I love you guys. Bucha likes came on, but in fairness, Labras, he was invisible. <laughs> no, but seriously, guys, I um, like, is are people in the comments concerned about that? I know there's a differing degree of people who are like, Olympiakos is a Greek football club. Um, Greek players should play. I'm more of the view, Olympiakos is a European football club. Greek players are not player, not it's okay, um, but we should have three right around three, because you kind of need three to three or four. We talked about this with uh, Luciano in our interview, like, and he said, "Oh yeah, it was important to have Greek players to kind of get on our back when there was some complacency, like, wake the fuck up, you idiots! Like, you lose this game, we're in such big trouble. The fans will come on us, blah blah blah. So, come onto our backs and like, yeah, really." Yeah. Yell at Here, us. Here's my thing. So, like, if we were the Olympiacos of old and, like, in Champions League, I wouldn't really have that big of an issue of, with it, I don't think. But now that we're more on the decline and our players, you don't see the passion in the team. I don't see why you can't give opportunities to some young players this season. Pinakas, uh, Surlis, Pinakas or, is on the other bench, man. I, that's the depressing thing. He was like on the Apollo now, let me so bench. Yeah. I mean, it, it it is shameful that it's only like it's zero. Like it should be at least one. But I would excuse it if it was, you know, a Champions League game uh, and we were at our peak and we just needed that quality. Yeah. Just the top quality. But um but you see messages like this, which is this is a really good question. This is, this is, this a really is something. Good question. This is something I think about too. It's like name top three top Greek players who you want to play in the starting eleven at Olympia. I've got Let's one. Take your time. Vlachodimos. Yeah. Okay. Vlachodimos. Keeper. Not coming to Olympia. I would say Zolis, bro. We need a winger. Do you, uh, yeah, Zolis. I, I want. I would have liked to see Zolis come in. I thought it was an opportunity yeah. that Norwich got got relegated. I thought that was and an maybe uh, Pavlidis or Duvikas. Yeah. That, that's a little iffy, but um, I'm not a huge fan. Siopis, of Pavlidis. I would take. I would take Siopis maybe. Siopis for sure. He's. A, um, I've always said that one was a mistake. The beast. Um, I don't see like why. Why do we get rid of Kane if we, we had Siopis? You know, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Atiakos maybe like, Mavropanos. Yeah, there's a few players, but Mavropanos. Yeah, some of these players don't play in Greece. Like so, realistically. 
I they think don't want to come back. is like thinking of moving to Lecce, like a newly promoted team said. Yeah, personally, why not bring him in? I don't know. I don't think they I, want to come back. But I think mentally, he, maybe he's not strong enough to play for Olympiaco. That's the problem too. A lot of the me- mentally strong enough or not mentally strong enough. The, the fact of the matter is, as a Greek player at Olympiacos, you get fucking destroyed mentally. Like. You, you you look at okay as bad as Bukalakis has been as bad as Andrusos has been as bad as Masuras at times has been like Jesus Christ the swearing the basically bad wishes that becomes on them whatever they do is really bad it's really really bad so yeah now the Greek players they always they but, always uh, and, get a ship and the big thing about Greek players and we've heard this from like literally everyone is just their mentality is really bad. Like the like when the going gets tough for a lot of Greek players, it's like, I want to go. Like I'll go abroad. Like you'll see a lot of them be like, I don't want to stay at Olympiakos. I want to leave or blah blah blah. You'll, I think even Luciano mentioned that he was like, yeah. The problem with Greek football, like one, the coaches don't trust the young Greek players, but the Greek young players don't trust themselves and are scared of the big moment, scared they're going to mess up, blah, blah, blah. So, well, They have a mentality issue when foreign players come in. They don't yeah. have a mentality that, oh, I'm going to beat him and I'm going to, he's, I'm not going to let him take my place. It's like, oh, shit, he's yeah. better than me. And that they're very kind of self, self-doubting. Um, I just want to bring this up as well. Is there any way to watch Olympiacos games like Paramount or Peacock? Says I think this is our, our friend from from South Korea. Yeah, <sighs> this is a painful issue that uh, to the point where players' families are actually reaching out to us and asking us this this same question. So when games were on Nova Sport, at least for the Greek um, for the Greek league. You had uh, Eon TV, uh, Net, uh, what was it Net Four Plus? What is it, Labro? Net, Adi knows it. It's Net TV Plus, something like that. Yeah, Net, um, Net TV yeah. Plus. But anyway, that that doesn't apply for Cosmo there. Um, long story short, guys, we are talking, trying to get the club's attention on this point as well because. Look! Look here! Right here! A prime example: People in South Korea are trying to watch Olympiacos games, and they don't know where they can watch the games. Uh, if we get into Europe, if we get into Europa League, I'm sure there will be some. There will be some Olympiacos games. Yeah, the games will be on. Um, for if Olympiacos makes Europa League, it'll be on Paramount. Adi told me that. I know that of things. There you go. I, so you can. That's the American channel because I've used that before. Yeah. <laughs> South poor. Is, uh, it says, ask the guest from Korea if he knows any good left back from Korea. We've got a few left backs in the squad yeah. now. Just, Leidner, no. Still uh, haven't seen. Still haven't seen Dorod Leidner. Leonardo Kutris was on the bench today. Maybe I'd like to played. see. I'd like to see Kutris Sunday night when when I'm in the stadium. So there you go. Maybe Kutris plays on Sunday. Yeah. Let's see. And there's quite a few, quite a few people that have dropped their like best 11s in here as well. Here's oh. one. ASG7, Meyeri and Carol in goal. Okay. Oh, Torosidis, Holebas, Melberg, Avram. I know Costas Llanos would agree with you on that. Or Baez. But that's that's Valverde's team. That's the team that could have gone all the way, that got knocked out by by that Ukrainian team. Was it Metalurg, Donetsk? God, don't remind me about that game. Meanwhile, we have Adi texting us in the fucking chat asking us if Olympiacos has signed Harry Arter for 45 million euros. This man is like such a boomer. He gets trolled by fake Twitter accounts like all the time. I just have to bring that up. Uh, of course, I look at this message. He's like, we really signed Harry Arter for 45 million euros? That seems like a lot. <laughs> How is this guy like the math genius? And then he gets trolled by like fake BBC accounts, man. Like, I swear to God, this man like will literally give you a statistical overview of any and every player. But then he like opens up Twitter and he's like, put his glasses on. He's like, um, BBC uh, fake See, one says we're signing Harry Arthur for 40 God. million euros and send it in our group chat. Like, Jesus Christ. It's Nottingham Forest fans are trolling us, man. Unbelievable. Oh, Unbelievable. To, to be fair, I mean, that's what we were doing to them. Not, not us, yeah, but yeah. in general, that was what People, was happening yeah. to them. 
Yeah. So now, now we're getting trolled again. Yeah. Costa, thank you so much for joining us, mate. Yeah. Um, thank you for supporting the channel. Yeah. Hope to and see you again in Michigan. Where are you in Michigan? As well. I'm in East Lansing, so like we're Michigan State. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a friend who went there as well. Nice. I don't. Oh, I. Me and Adi went to the University of Maryland, so we're a bit rivals of Michigan State, I guess. Now it is. Big Ten. Exactly. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah. well, Maryland sucks, though, but yeah. Uh, how dare you? <laughs> but <laughs> I don't want to open that can of worms tonight. So, um, we'll just be letting you go and we'll, we'll stay yeah. strong on all the course. Kalita, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for that. Yes, mate. Okay, guys, that was Costa from uh, East Lansing, Michigan, guys. And we have Vasily here, who's also joined the pod before from Detroit, saying Detroit is better. Fair, fair. Put your hands up, Detroit. Big yeah. up. Big up to um, our followers in the Lovely city. US. Yeah. I've never been to Detroit, actually. I'm, I've been to Chicago. I've been to Wisconsin, surprisingly. But I've never been, never been to Detroit, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I just want to touch on that point you made about like Greek players. Is it important? Is it not? Et cetera. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Because you guys talked about it yesterday on, on the pod after I left. Or at least Stell made the point is that the academy, the bloody academy, like you look at, look at how much money Marinakis has invested in the academies at Olympiakos to the point where we have scouting network, Olympiakos schools opening around the world, like Australia, Canada, US, Dubai, um, UK. What do we do? What do we do with all these like schools and academies? Like, are we properly using that? Because some people, some people might disagree with me, but we just cannot attract like top players. And I'm fed up of bringing in average foreign players i'm so fed up of it i would have much more patience if the, again this is me maybe i'm too emotional about it i would have more patience with with kids that are brought up in an olympiagos environment but quick question no how do you feel about guys from olympiagos b who are now foreigners you know because isn't it kind of crazy olympiagos b which was meant for the academy to bring the young greek players has become full of like French players or the Czech guy was playing with them, blah, 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 um, which is kind of crazy. I, I guess it's a good opportunity for some of these players like who aren't completely ready for the first team. Let's say Dabo, let's say King Kue, let's say Ali Shic, Ali Jic, and blah, blah, blah. My girlfriend's calling. No, but the, the point is, is that we really need to, we really need to like, build develop that connection between the academies and the first team and i've said it before in the pod like i think we should have as an objective every season to to bring up a player from the academy and really install him in in the first team like that should be a target every year whether it's one or two and players. it's greek or foreign that's fine you don't care from the academy for me it's like from, from the, the academy, academy. b team what, what does the academy b, oh, b team okay. for me is not academy b team's not academy okay b team i get, b I get team. your point okay so the under the, the under 20s the under 17s like that nah. no, i'm not gonna say it I'm not gonna no, say no, it. We, 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 is like we, not we, a we, professional we, footballer like i if, if, about anyone who's seen kinkue play football you're just like how is this guy here? This guy like played for Inter Milan Youth Academy. How they do it? No, uh, Neko. Oh uh, yeah, I saw of... this as well. What? Like what? He's twenty four. He's twenty four. No, he's not. He's like twenty. They said in the newspaper. No, he's twenty four. Shut up. He's. That's 24. what I read. If some if somebody else has got information on this, I'm pretty sure I read like he's a twenty four year old defender. Like he played football in Senegal. Put Again, going back, going back to Twitter or Olympiakos Twitter, like people were like, "Bam of the summer, we've made the new signing," and it was like, "Papa, Papa Busi say his brother is here." It's like, "Shut up, no way." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And some some people responding on this issue of academies it says Pedro says it's difficult for young academy players to play in Greece because they have no patience. Yeah. Yeah, mate, that's it. Yeah, Do you have yeah, the patience to, to allow these players to make mistakes? I know we want to win every single game and there's pressure, mm -hmm. but they know that pressure when they're in Olympiacos Academies. 
So we need to do a better job than maybe of, of uh, identifying talent, not just playing talent, but mental attributes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Come on. Uh, th this is a good one as well. Is that Ilio says, I don't think Olympiacos fans can handle it. We love Zulagis, but one mistake and we'll eat him alive. Goalkeeper position is very particular, guys. Yeah, it's very particular. I don't think Zulagis or any 19 year old will ever play goalkeeper for Olympiacos. I, that's just my opinion. Also, because it's so difficult, you almost do what Leeds United did with uh, the young French goalkeeper they had, and you're just like, Medlier. Me and they're just like, fuck it, we don't care if he's going to make a ton of mistakes. Like, we know he's going to make a ton of mistakes. We're not upset. And now you have Manchester United begging them to pay for him. And they're like, oh, yeah, fuck off. So, yeah. yeah. Concept Couch here bringing up Surlis. Uh, Surlis played 10 minutes on the weekend. So he's yeah, played he doesn't play, before. but he doesn't play very much for them. I've been following his minutes yeah. and he's not playing yeah. very much. He got Hopefully. he got his first minutes on the weekend as a sub. I think he played 10, 10 12 minutes. That's all. So he's not starting for them right now. Um, I, I was thinking, though, why don't we like... Would it be so bad to recall some of these guys from alone, like Pinaka, Surlis, and just be like, screw it? Normally, you need that? to add a clause. You need to add ah, a clause okay. like a, for a recall. So I'm not sure that's possible. Uh, that's possible, mate. But but you know what? Like there, there are some comments here as well that, that triggered uh, something that I wanted to bring up earlier. And I thought Usainu Bar had another really good game today. Mm, I and, and you know who didn't have such a great game again is Papi Sise. Yeah, like what's so going on there? I don't know. Like I, honestly, I thought I thought Bar was good, like really good today. There was a, I think that there was a chance in the second half where they got the ball down the right hand side and a dangerous cross came in and he. He he got in front of the striker like he slid on the ground. He cleared the ball like cleanly, and it was like, like that's the bar that I remember before he got injured type thing. Yeah. So it, it's a shame that like Cisse is kind of dropped off again. He has those lapses in concentration. Um, had good moments during the game as well. He was quite but, calm on the ball, but but like we I, can I just say, say that like, Cisse, and then we're like we saw what Socrates did with Slovan Bratislava and we're like, okay, like that was incredible lapse of concentration. So do we have any better, you know, do we have anything better? I don't know. No, but I, I just thought like, it, it, I think it deserves to be said, like, because we've given some stick to Usain Ubar on, on yeah, this yeah. show. And I think we've got to call it how we see it as well. And I thought he had a good game today. I just, so I just wanted to to credit, give credit where credit's due to Saini Bar. Like, drop your comments in the chat as well, guys. Like, let us know what you thought. Where's this central defense like partnership going? Again, even that that's going to be one that might. Oh, yeah, be we don't have, we don't have central defense partnership, and none of the central defenders really can play together. Like. They're not meant to play with each other. Like Manolas and Cisse is not a center back pairing. Uh, Manolas Socrates is not a center back pairing. You need a central defender who can play the ball on the floor just a bit, you know. You and we don't have a defender who can play the ball on the ground. Um, I also don't know what Socrates or Manolas are like as players anymore. I just I don't know. Yeah. Kitos so. is a guy that we forget about. Do you know what, mate? I, I, I hope that the new manager kind of puts Kitos in his real position because Why this is whole play him thing, on the wing and just yeah. screw it. Like this uh, whole thing about playing all of our academy a right back, Andrusos a right back, Kitos a left back. All all the Greek players showed up. They're like, Oh, I'm a winger, I'm a striker, and Pedro Martins is like, No, you're you know a wing what, back. buddy, you're a fucking wing back. And they're just like, Wait, what? And he's like, That's it. You play wing back or you leave this club. So I don't know. I would it's not good, play Manolas next week. It's right. a good question. I wouldn't either. I'd stick with what we have because I think those two have chemistry. I think those two have chemistry. Yeah. And Manolas and Manolas and Bar have never played together. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like Manolas is on how much money and he's like your third or fourth choice central defender. But, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, honestly, people are saying, like, I've never remember El Arabi missing so many chances. There were some games last season that were so bad. 
Like, let's be real. Like, this isn't surprising. Like, there's been some times where El Arabi has been in trouble. So, yeah, Pedro is saying, I hate the Jew of saying, but our center backs, they make mistakes all the time. I prefer Pup with uh, Pup with uh, Papa Sathopoulos, I guess, with Cisse or Manolas. I don't know what's going on with Socrates, man. Or man, know, last man, what, what, what? They, they always say like the newspaper. They're like, he's got a deep strain. He's got a deep strain. Uh, what, what does uh, that I'm, mean? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a bit, I'm gonna be a bit n- nasty here, but I wish we had the good Samedo says ASG seven, and my response to that is I wish Samedo had a brain. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, but anyway, let's see. I, I think we're reaching the end of uh, our our time. I have to pack tomorrow. I have work to do. I have things to do. Um, go, mate. If you you've no, got to go, no, and pack. I, I I'm gonna pack tomorrow morning. I've already decided. I'm more of a morning person, which is surprising because of this podcast. I stay up until all hours of the night, but six thirty in the morning, I'm awake. I don't know what it is. I'm a morning person, so yeah. There you go. You're learning, learning Labrosirmos' tactics. You're learning, uh, you're learning, routine. and then it's, yeah, making slide decks and things. So. Chris Filipeos, I'll keep saying it. Watch for Lara being leg two, man, always comes back. Amen, brother. Yeah, let's I, see. We all bloody well hope so. Like he was there when we had our backs against the wall against Slovan when we were 1 0 down. He got the goal. I, I really do hope so. So those chances that he missed today is just absolutely unacceptable for me. Yeah. Absolutely unacceptable. You uh, just no need excuses. to you need to put him on the bench for a little while and play Has- Oh wait, no, you can't because Hassan is like Aliya Gitch. Aliya is gonna start on the Ali- weekend, Ali- telling you. Is he I'm on the B you. list? Is list list of Vita? Like you know they no, have no, the second. I'm talking about the buzz game. It, I don't oh know. shit! I fucking forgot. We've got the buzz oh game God. on Sunday. Don't forget. I, and I will. I, I'm gonna be there. I'm, I'm forgetting about the game, but I'm gonna be there. I already got a ticket, so. Mate, they're, they're they're flying back tomorrow, Friday. They've got Saturday training, Sunday game. Oh my no God. time. No time for recovery. That's they're gonna, gonna have, be. It's gonna be yeah. an interesting game, guys. Like for those of you that are in Greece, if you're around the Athens area, if you can go to the game, go to the game. Yeah, um, go to the so, game. Have a beer with me before the game. Also, it's... surprise, uh, Adi is going to be there. Adi is going to be there as well with me. Um, so we're going to do a little Gates of an International thing. So if you're around, you're in the stadium, you're in the area, come have a beer with us. I think we're going to eat dinner in Mikro Limano, like type area, maybe something like that. I don't know. So if people are around, they want to say hello. We're going to be sitting in gate 23, so across from gate 7, so uh yeah gate 23 is where we sit so uh we'll be there and then i'll be at the game uh, with apolona next week in the stadium as well thursday night so um i'll let you guys know so um yeah feel free um we'll drop it on our social media so yeah whoever's there in in pirea yes i'm i'm sorry I, someone made the comment not athens yeah but Yorgo, they're going to be sitting in gate 23. But like yeah, we said, so. like, drop a message on the socials yeah. and uh, you guys will be able to meet. Uh, I would love to love to be able to join you guys, of course. But I am expecting, well, my wife is expecting our third kid. Any any moment I could, could be rushing off to hospital now. Yeah. Ho- hopefully not. Hopefully a bit more, a bit more time. But yeah, so I'm I'm a little bit jealous. I'm going to miss that. But, uh, but guys, make the most of it, of course. Yeah. And so uh, excited to... to, to <laughs> you see this comment? You fucking, all right, this guy wants me to get killed. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not going to wear a green, green shirt. And clown. What is this? There we go. So, um, so yeah, exciting times everywhere, guys. Um, uh, yeah. Well... Let's all wish for the best. So prediction next week, uh, Costa has a new child and we also win. There we go. That's my prediction. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was joking with my with my wife a little earlier. I told her if yeah, 
Should we call the kid Huang? <laughs> no, <sure. laughs> you imagine Huang hat trick same night. You're like, it's it's set in stone. It's it has to. Afghan is top idea. Afghan is top. Nice to call. Oh, I feel it. Raki. Pino, pino Yuzu. Yuzu. I'm an I'm ready tonight. I've got some Asian Asian drinks. Uh, normally, I've got my Tsikudia from Crete, but not tonight. Not tonight. Celebrate next week, hopefully. Let's see. Meto galo. Karesto pedi ya kipal. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm predicting we go through next week, and uh, and yeah, Costa has a child. Maybe <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Can Costa's baby play left back? <laughs> <laughs> I've got another two kids. Maybe one of them ends up playing for Olympiacos. Let's see. I've got I've got yeah. three chances. Well, one we need a women's team, and then the other two we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, exactly. Garisto, thanks for the messages, guys. Nasta gala. Uh, okay, guys. Well, I think that's really all we've got. Um... Uh, I don't. I'm done. Can, so if you want to keep going, go ahead. But let's I'm, see. Let's see when Labro drops out. How many people? How many people leave as well? I'm gonna stick yeah. around. I'm gonna no. stick around with you guys. I've got a bit so, more. I will wish good. everyone a good night. So I want to apologize again for last night's episode. I was a bit out of it. Sorry for the negativity. Um, working quite a bit too. So yeah. Um, I'll talk to you guys all in, uh, and yes, we can meet outside gate seven. Maybe, um, we'll, we'll go to, to the bar outside. We'll see. We'll talk about this later. Um, so I'll see, see some of you this weekend outside the stadium, um, with Aris. He's going to be there guys. He's going to be there from America for his first ever Olympiacos game. So if you're around, make it a special appearance, a special moment for him. Um, and on that note, I wish you all a good night. Uh, we'll talk soon. Ciao, ciao. Can't mix a labro. I'll be mixed with you later. Yeah. Ciao, man. There you have it, guys. Like we can keep going a little bit more. I've dropped the link in the chat as well for anyone that wants to join me. You can come and talk more about the game. Anything you guys want, I'm going to stick around a bit more. Keep looking at the comments in the chat as well. Anything that we may have missed tonight the chat's been on fire if you haven't hit the like button already guys like hit that like button it will help to disseminate the episodes and get it out to more people help us to grow the community and bring more people into gate seven international this is a show by the fans for the fans without you guys none of this would be possible Alec was the great. I think this is a new subscriber. All teams in top leagues play with young players, 17 to 19 years old in Greek Super League. They ate, they don't. Yeah, I think I think the, <laughs> the point Alegos is making is that in other leagues, if you're 18, 19, you're considered a first team player, you're ready to play. Here in Greece, we still consider 21, 22, 23 as talent and, you know, player that's breaking into the first team. Whereas in other leagues everywhere across Europe, those players are already playing first team football. That's a fact um, point being made by, by Alekos. There, there is uh, a conversation that's been had in, in Greece about the possibility of limiting the amount of foreign players or having a certain quota for Greek players in each team i think the idea was having at least five greek players in the starting 11. i don't know if we need to be that extreme in in terms of making it mandatory but that is something that uh, that was being discussed i know in in circles last year what else we got sorry guys like it's hard to keep up with all the comments i'm doing the best i can here uh, Count Gunther, do you think we will be able to overcome Martin's awful training during the season or should we strike it through? Um, honestly, mate, I don't. I think none of us know. None of us know what the hell has happened during preseason. Like, what was his idea exactly? Bearing in mind, we also have the World Cup starting November. I can't understand. The, the, the only thing I really can't understand is why he chose to play six friendlies in 10 days and before all those friendlies to have heavy training sessions. I don't I don't get it. And I think also that Corberan's come into a team and 
he's obviously come from from championship where they're very physical they're very fit and he's um he's come into the team and probably you, know, you like to think he he's made an assessment of the players conditions looked at the numbers and everything and said okay i'm going to bring in my training regime and i i have a feeling that that training regime may have been too heavy uh, as well it may have exacerbated problems but it's hard to say like what's gone wrong all we know is that something's wrong because the players struggle uh, to accelerate to, to really run on the pitch and i think we and when you have a confidence problem too when you're on the pitch as well then it becomes it becomes even worse and i think when when we got the equalizer and when you know the confidence came back into it the, the legs they they move a little bit faster like you forget about the fatigue and, and and being tired when you're playing with confidence anyone that's played football or any kind of professional sport you know that when confidence when you have confidence in your in, in your mind and that energy you forget you're tired so um that's not helping that's not helping us uh right now the team badly needs a win a win next week and i really hope we get it i think it can help turn things around uh and change the atmosphere for the team as well notwithstanding like we've said all the time like the team needs new signings absolutely costas papa dimitriu our good friends yes costa we must eliminate the pathetic mentality from some players he says we need to find back our dominant mentality in these games and yeah like i said i think that will come with when we start to pick up wins um and hopefully with with the help of some more some more quality signings as well is this uh you have bad defense all you need to change that first i think this is a friend from from israel it's a little bit the defense but it's not just the defense that's def that's defending it's the whole approach to defending in general everybody in the in the team needs to defend it's a team sport best form of uh the best form of defense is attacking or vice versa you know you have the defense starts from the attack if you want to be a pressing team as well ah uh, now i see there are some trolls coming in the chat as well saying do we remember piero yeah we remember piero congrats guys like we said congratulations uh you deserve to go through uh haifa with a better team we said that i don't really understand why why people are trying to troll us for nothing kevin milara said i would buy hadzidza from maccabi okay we need we can i think we can find find better players no offense <laughs> salvatore says juan premier league soon hopefully we can hang on to him for 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 a while for a while mate uh, I saw there was another comment from KNA03. Also, I mean, Martins, Alexa, make up your gymnastic with any person with the physical catastrophe on Pechton, get you Martins, then in a gymnastics manager in the unit and I can't to give you to most. Um, the, the guy that does the fitness training is a, is a Greek guy that's been there forever. I think he's still there. I can't remember his name now. If it comes back to me, if it comes back to me, I'll mention it. But obviously, like there is the Greek fitness coach that's always been there throughout the years. The one that uh, Omar El Abdallah, we talked about um, when he was, um, I think, in one of his interviews that he gave before before he left. Uh, I, I can't remember his name right now. But obviously, Martins had his people as well, uh, coaching as well fitness and he he's the one that determines the program isn't it so he's the boss it's his responsibility oh he was the boss uh, echo seven sabotage says we lack yeah we lack people in key positions scouting department analytics technical director these are the ones who run a team day by day so we don't want so we don't wait for the president to make decisions um Absolutely, mate. It's something we've talked about, and it does look like Julien Fournier will be taking over in September. Maybe it's, it's a case of better late than never. This is a guy with um with a fantastic CV. He's done a great job at OGC Nice. Uh, I mean, the guy I think was the youngest president of a French League One side uh, while he was at Strasbourg. 
So he has a lot of experience, good network. His son lives in Greece. So I think uh, this guy, if you, you read a Nico Scotti's article, I think last week, actually one of the better articles that he writes, it's actually got some reporting in it. His job is going to be to come in and really set things up. Um, people that were in the scouting department, like uh, Bartolo that came from Mike, he's not there anymore. Um, but we also do have competent people in the scouting department and analytics in particular. So, you know, Fournier's job is going to come in, is to come in and really run the football side of things for the board. That is what we're lacking. We're lacking technocrats. We're lacking those kinds of people. Legend Sevens, Costa, we need to give this coach a chance already. There are signs of improvement. Absolutely. I we That's a theme that we touched on already during the show. We said there are definitely signs of improvement every single game. Um, still not there yet. I think, it, I really think it's um, a confidence thing and also just players that have come full circle that need to go. Um, I don't want to be mean tonight. We, I think we all know who the players are that need to be moved on. All of you, a lot of you have said the squad is bloated. We have far too many players on the squad. It's unfortunate as well that we, we, we can't sell players. We haven't sold anyone this window. Everyone's gone out on loan. Carvalho has gone out on loan. Pepe has gone out on loan. Onyekuru has gone out on loan. Okay, Tiquinho. Tiquinho we sold for, for around 1 million. I think he's worth four on transfer marks. We, you know, we we don't have to pay his contract anymore. So that's some money in the bank. Uh, that's another issue that the technical director and the new footballing people in the board need to deal with. They need to help us to get better at selling players. And we also need to get a bit more realistic about our um, our price valuations, probably as well. I think uh, it's true after the the Wolves game and and the impact that we had that season in Martin's second season, we we were very high in our valuation of players. And maybe we need to think more about uh, deals where we lower our valuation, but we include clauses, percentage clauses for these players. So that's an idea. And those are maybe ideas that the new uh, the new staff will will bring along with them. Dionysus from Frankfurt. What is going on with Manolas and Papasathopoulos? I don't know, mate. I don't know, mate, what's going on with them. Is Papasathopoulos past it? I I alluded to that in my in well a previous a previous podcast. Manolas, Manolas to me looks unfit since we signed him. He just looks unfit. I, I, I really do hope that, that we see not the Manolas that we sold, but the Manolas that was considered a top defender on the European stage or something close to that, because I don't think we've seen that since he's come back. And we we deserve to see that from him. That's why he came back at the age he came back. I hope that's why he came back. Those were the reasons. Murikis, Christos Murikis is the name of the, the fitness coach. Thanks, guys. A few of you popped that up in the chat there. What else we got? Uh, there's another um, another one. Yorgos has, has mentioned uh, his his top, his best lineup, starting 11 for Olympiacos, Roberto in goal, Yorgatos. Avram Melberg Torosidis. I think I agree with that back line, mate. I'm with you on that. Keeper, I'm not sh- I'm not so sure I agree with you. Stoltidis, Durag, Galetti, Rivaldo, Djordjevic, Bent Christensen. That's an interesting one. I um, can't say I saw him play. For me, there's no way I leave Giovanni out of the team. Um, Castillo gets a shout too, probably from me. But it's hard. Like I've had so many good wingers. Like How do you leave Djordjevic out? How do you leave Galetti out? How do you leave Rivaldo? Like Those guys out. Fantastic players. Am I Greek or English? I'm both. Or well, born in England, grew up there. My parents are Greek, and I live in Belgium. So there you go, mate. That's the short story. Everybody chiming in with with Morikis.
Ωραία σου είδω. Σταύρο, Αγκιμπού δεν αξίζει χρόνο συμμετοχή. Πιστεύω ο Κούτρι χρειάζεται ευκαιρίε. Ε, φίλε, ελπίζω ο Κούτρι να πάρει έστω κάποια λεπτά συμμετοχή με τον Μπα. Ε, αν όχι ο, ο Λέιτνερ, δεν ξέρω. Ο Αγκιμπού. Switch back to English. Ο Αγκιμπού. For me, he's not been the same since Copa Africa. I think we said that before. But also, guys, this is important. When you bring in a player like that who's never played high-level professional football, remember, Agibu was a B-team player for Lille. They let him go. And, you know, we, we, we picked up a gem. And overnight, the guy became a starter. And when a manager gives you that kind of role, is you, you know you have to manage players differently. And um, there was an interesting, an interesting interview that Jorgatos did. I think it was with Sport Twenty Four, but Lizia Madopoulos, and they were talking about Timikas. Um, and uh, Jorgatos was obviously like quite an influential figure in in Timikas's development, and he was around when Marcus Silva was there. And everyone remembers probably a game that Timikas had against Larissa. I think it was away from home before he got loaned out to, to Denmark, was it? People said he had a poor game. And I think a couple of games before that, he had a good game. And my point is, is that they did something with, Jorgato said they did something with Timikas. Is they, they played him in a match in the first team. And then the next game, they sent him back down to the under-20s. To, to train with the, with the youth team. And Jorgato said something about them doing that on purpose to see what his reaction would be. Like, what would his mentality be? Because if, if, he, if he reacted in a bad way, like he got angry or whatever, like that, that says things about the player's mentality, right? But... But Timikas didn't do that. He went back down, like he played with the youth team, like he, he trained hard and he came back. And then he went out on loan eventually. But my point with Agibu is, is that they didn't manage him. They didn't manage his development. And we know like the team, the team performance was not great. Not by a stretch last season. It was hard to watch many games last year. But Agibu was something fresh. But then, like, all of a sudden, this 20-year-old kid becomes, like, the star of the team. Of course, that's going to get to his head. So I think, like, from a man management perspective, they manage that poorly. And I think that's coming back to bite in the case of Agibu. And I use that Timikas example as an example of man management. How do you manage youth? Like, how do you identify issues of mentality? Or mental capacity of these players. Uh, KN803 again on this issue of the fitness coach. If the same is very different, this terrible difference in physical catastrophe, let's say, and Mourinho is about to start Martins. I don't know about that, mate. Yeah, and I see the the chats also kicking off as well between some of the Maccabi fans and. And our fans as well. Legend Seven says we need a central defender, number 10, left back and a winger. Absolutely agree with you on a winger. Way, do I know what's going on with Leidner? If you believe the Greek reports, apparently they're saying he's not ready. But the Greek reporters were also saying that Huang wasn't ready. So I don't know what to believe. I think I think it's an issue that has to do with the UEFA list because uh, Kutris counts as a Greek player. You need a certain number of Greek players. You need eight Greek players and four need to come from academy uh, in, the, in the UEFA list that we submit. We had a problem. We had an issue with the number of Greek players. And if you don't meet that quota of Greek and academy players, you can submit less players in your UEFA list. So I think the fact that we submitted Kutris's name allowed us to add extra names to the list. And if we'd have put Leidner, for example, we might not have been able to put Juan because we didn't have enough, uh, enough Greeks submitted on the list. I think that, my sense is that's been the issue and the reason why Leidner was not, um, was not picked 
in the UEFA list. We'll see on, on Sunday. Not far. It's already Friday. It's 12.08 here, Belgian time. It's one, nearly one, one ten Greek time, an hour ahead. What else have we got? Yeah, this is a topic that we discussed a little bit earlier, Stavro, about, about the youth team. Big, big question marks, though. Like, do they have the right mentality? Are we identifying the right kind of kids? That's a... This is something we always come back to and love to talk about this issue about the about the youth team. Kunde, we didn't we talked a little bit about him today. I loved his his energy. Anybody that watched the the pre-match press conference, he was there with the coach. He was very um, he was very animated, you know. He said, I worked my ass off. He said, I use those words, I work my ass off in training. For the previous manager and for this one, so I think he has a he has a lot to prove, and you see there are moments in the game sometimes where he kind of overdoes it. He wants to show so much that he has energy that he wants to give to the team. He runs after balls that are lost, you know, way up the field. Doesn't need to do that, but he feels desperately like wants to prove something. And my word, that shot he took on the 17th minute today, I thought, what the hell are you doing? When I saw him kind of position the ball to take a strike, but that was a hell of a strike and. He has power. He has, uh, you know, he has very physical presence in the midfield. So it really, again, begs the question: like, why did Martins disappear? This player, and and it's like he's almost like a new signing. He is almost like a new signing for midfield, Pierre Kunde, because we didn't see him play last season. Got very little opportunity, very few minutes to play. Guys, it's 1.10 and it's getting late. I'm still looking through the chat here for more more comments. They keep coming in. You guys have got, got energy. I've got to get up early in the morning. Well, this is one. Coach Zach says, greetings from the USA. We deserve to win. Thrilo showed progress. Nice to battle the gala. Thrilo Zacharias Papanicolao, USSF licensed coach. Thank you, Coach Zach. We had the chances to win, mate. Particularly between the 50th and 60th minute, they were those chances that we missed were just one after the other. It could have been three or four one easily. Uh, Sila, hello, my friend. Says very true about Agibu. I read that Fournier focuses a lot on youngsters' mentality, even reaches out to the families. Good point. Yeah, I think that was another point that was raised in in Nikos Kotis's article as well. Um, tut de la tut. Hello to you, old friends, and uh, been with us for a while. I remember Omar made a special farewell to Murugis. Yeah, that is um, that's what I alluded to earlier as well. He's a, he's a workaholic. He loves working with the players. He's very dedicated. He's been around the club forever. There's a reason why he's always there for sure. Giovanni. Εσύ, φίλε, που πρόλαβες τον Γιωβάνη, εσένα ποια είναι η άποψή σου. Γιατί πράγμα, Σταύρο. Φ, φ, για, για μένα είναι ο αγαπημένος μου παίχτης. For me, he's one of the reasons I love football. Him and Eric Cantona, growing up in England. It was Eric Cantona first. Um, and then, yeah, get, getting older, watching Olympiacos more, with my dad going to games, Giovanni was just unreal. The things that he did. <laughs> The funny thing is that he looks fitter now than when he was actually playing, but that's another topic. And more comments about us needing a centre-back. Mangala is a free agent? No, 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 no. Finished player. For me, he's finished. Umtiti, don't think it's happening, mate. It's, it's contracts, like, almost... Eight million, I want to say. There's no way. There's no way I see that happening. Good night, my friend Bunio from Poland. Thanks for joining us. Agilos Lucas, Costa Yama then he actually opens the back up to up to Mbilami because prefer to get tax money to Xari. I think I suppose Salinka. Me ask again, it's not Salinka. Νομίζω ότι η Εμβιλά 
με αυτόν τον προπονητή είναι ο μεγαλύτερος κερδισμένος. Γιατί στο σύστημά του το 6 είναι, παίζει πολύ σημαντικό ρόλο. Είναι ένας παίχτης που γίνεται κατά κάποιο τρόπο, όχι τρίτο, τρίτο center back, αλλά μπαίνει ενδιάμεσα από τα center back και ξεκινάει τις επιθέσεις. Και είναι αυτό που αρέσει να κάνει στον Εμβιλά, να ξεκινάει τις επιθέσεις από πίσω. Και, και μάλιστα γνωρίζουμε ότι, ότι νιώθει κάπως απελευθερωμένος και ότι νιώθει ξανά αγάπη για, για αυτό που κάνει με αυτό το προπονητή. Οπότε αυτό είναι πάρα πολύ θετικό. Ε, συμφωνώ μαζί σου ότι Τώρα που το σκέφτομαι, άμα χτυπήσω ο Εμβιλά, τι θα κάνουμε. Ποιο θα παίξει εκεί, στο 6. Μπουχαλάκη. Δεν είναι το ίδιο. Μπορεί. Ο Μπουχαλάκη αυτή τη στιγμή είναι χάλια. Δεν έχει αυτοπεποίθηση. Δεν ξέρω τι. τι έχουμε μιλήσει για τα αποδητήρια. Για μένα ο Εμβιλά είναι πολύ σημαντικό παίχτη για την ομάδα. Δεν το συζητάω καν. Ίσως χρειάζεται, αλλά αν με ρωτήσεις ε, που είναι στις προτεραιότητες και με βάση το, το roster που έχουμε τώρα, τους παίχτες που έχουμε στο υπάρχον roster, νομίζω οι, οι άμεσες ανάγκες είναι αλλού. Επιθετικό, extreme, center back για μένα. Κέντρο έχουμε, έχουμε πολλούς. Πρέπει να αδειάσει, κάποιος πρέπει να φύγει. Μαντί, δεν, δεν είπα καν το μαντί. Το μαντί περιμένουν να φύγει. Με όλο το σεβασμό στον παίχτη και αυτά που έχει δώσει. Δεν, δεν λέω κάκο, ε, άσχημα πράγματα για το μαντί. Χουάν είναι το kind of player who, who we missed in 2020 in order to reach the Europa League final. Εντάξει. Sure. Um, να είναι καλά ο Μαρτσίνιακ. Fucker. But that referee. Um, Legend Seven Sports Cantona when he was playing at Leeds first. Yes, mate. Yes, when he was at Leeds. Of course at United as well, but I, I, I was watching him when he was at Leeds before he went to United. Unbelievable player. As I said, one of my favorites. One of the reasons I love football. Hassan. Uh, Dimitri, I think Hassan will go. I think we've asked his agent to look for, for, a, for a club. If we're bringing in another striker, which I assume we will be, bringing in another striker. It's been reported as well. Uh, we know for a fact we're looking for a striker. I don't think Hassan will accept to be third striker again. So I think he'll be on the way out. And I think maybe we'll see someone like Ali Yagic uh, as a third option as well. Let's see. I think um, it's going to be interesting on Sunday to see what kind of side he puts out uh, if he if he employs rotation as well to, to rest players and have them fresh for Thursday. In Colacopros League, that there was a standoff between Envila and Martins. Yeah, apparently Envila didn't, or Martins rather, didn't like what uh, Envila said in, in the press conference when he was asked the tactical question. He said, ask the coach. I don't know what's wrong with that. Bombardismento to Pio Tapoditiria, to Megalitro Sfalma to Martins, put to He was there a long time, man, and a lot of the same faces. I think there's also an issue there in terms of. Uh, Some discoordination, I would say, or lack of communication between Modesto and and Martins. I think there were a lot of players that were brought into the squad without Martins' knowledge. Think of players like Fadiga. Maybe he could become useful. I haven't seen. I haven't seen much. Uh, let's see if he comes back into the fold. Costa no miso pano po olo pano po la celume de carrier, Adelfe. Um, I don't know if this manager wants to play with the 10. And, and it's funny because when we see the formations shown on the telly, like they show us playing with a 10, but his formation it, it morphs into different shapes during the game. He talked in his press conference about playing four different shapes up front and three different shapes at the back. So I think... I think the traditional sense of the 10 is kind of a little bit lost in the modern game. Like you need players that can play in different positions. Like like Huang today is really like an 8 slash 10. You saw him at moments like we were we were shaped like a 4-4-2 almost, and he was close to El Arabi and he was pressing high up the field. And then there were other shapes where we were playing three across the middle 
and four at the, four at the back or even like a four four one at times as well. So for me, for me, you need that winger that can penetrate, that can run at people, and. I don't know if De La Fuente is going to be the one to do that. That's going to be a starter week in, week out. But we need, we badly need like a Galetti slash Mirala slash Podense, that kind of player that can make things happen on the wings, that can take players on one on one. We just, we don't have that. We don't have that right now. And let's see how things go with, um, with De La Fuente. My guy, what about Kamara Abubakar? What's your opinion? He's injured right now, but he really looked good. He's a decent player. I think he's a decent player. I, I'm. We haven't seen much of him since he joined. I wish, I wish that the club would have an injury list on their website that they would communicate to the fans, like what the status of players is. In terms of their injuries, but unfortunately, we know we know nothing. All we know about uh, Abu Bakar Kamara, and I've asked this, is that Echlas, is that a strain uh, in English? Variathlasi, I guess, he's been out for weeks. I don't know. I don't know. I think he can be helpful. Um, I think he has a role to play more as a as a forward, not as a winger. It was a Martin signing. Let's see. I'm curious to see how the new coach uses him. At Fulham, he was employed on, on the wing quite a lot as a left winger. But um, I, I don't know. I don't know. We have to wait and see. We have to judge everyone on the pitch, mate. Like, again, decent player, not fantastic. Probably not a player that I would have paid as much as we paid for. But But now that's what it is. <laughs> uh, you got jokes. How can you be expecting a third child and have no white hair? I have one and my whole head's gone white. <laughs> Other fair good genes. What can I say? What can I say? Good genes. Good Greek genes. Thank you. Να σου ζήσω το παιδάκι φίλε και να χαίρεις την οικογένειά σου. Ο Χαβαϊάν λέει πολύ σωστός για τον Εμβιλά. Το δεκάρι θα είναι ο Χουάν. Εντάξει, πες το δεκάριο, οκτάρο, δέκαρο, πες το όπως θες φιλαράκι, φίλε μου. Avila is one of the best players on our roster, of course. Guys, we haven't seen Versalico, and we said it in the deep dive. Um, if you guys haven't watched the deep dive that Ari did on, on Sima Versalico, go back and listen to that. That's one of the main things we said. Like The conclusion, one of the conclusions Ari, Ari made was that this guy is the best right back we've signed since Dorosidis, but can he keep fit? Can he stay fit? Was the big question mark. Haven't seen much of him. He, he, even the games that he did play, he was like borderline fit. So Avila's been okay. Like I like that he runs a lot forward. He gives options. I think that'll be very useful in Greece. Defensively, some he's lacking for sure. Good thing is that he knows the manager and the manager knows him. I think that's very good for him. Got it. <sighs> Would be if he could stay fit. He's another one of those players. He's an unpredictable player. Still people going on about Huang. Yeah. Thodoros Asimag says Ivy Lopez would be a low key great signing as an attacking versatile midfielder. He's killing it in Poland. He's his team just beat Slavia. Great numbers. I don't know him, mate. I'll check him out, though. Alexandros, thank you for another wonderful show. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Coach Zach, thank you for the nice comment as well. Slightly random question. Do you reckon now that we have... The now that we have Conference League, our chances of winning your European Cup have increased significantly. Let's see, mate. Let's see what competition we, we end up in. Um, I, I've said it before. I think I think that Greek football in general is Conference League level. Olympiakos' level should always be aiming to be Champions League. And uh, we should be aiming to go as far as we can, getting past the group stages, if possible, or at least finishing third, right? 
Um, can we win the Conference League? I don't know. Let, let's see. Let's see. Let's not uh, jump the gun too much. This time next Thursday, we'll know which competition we'll be playing in. And uh, I hope that we won't be having that conversation about the Conference League. But let's see. We'll be here next week and, and we'll talk about We'll talk about things and see where things are. Hopefully, we are in the Europa League group stages uh, this time next week. Alexander Katopis. Thank you for the technical analysis of the Agones and the Pathos and the Olympiac Costa and Labro and Ari. Thank you for your time. Thank you, friends. And I think this is going to be the last comment. Uh, some support is celebrating because we didn't lose from a Cypriot team. No, mate. I think anyone celebrating, we're here, we're chatting, we're discussing. I think a lot of enthusiasm about about Juan. We've said it before, the way this season's gone, decisions weren't taken last season that needed to be taken. We were, I think we said things quite clearly. We expressed concerns last year about where things were going, um, what could happen. Things happened. We have a new coach. Um, the new coach is, is showing signs of improvement uh, every every game. Uh, since every game that he's he's taken charge from from the first game against Slovan, there's not a lot more we can ask for right now as Olympiacos fans. Is uh, we want to see improvement every game, more improvement against uh, against Bas on Sunday. Bas is always a tricky opponent when they come to Karaiskaki. Have been for the last few years. We all remember the thriller with that Ronnie Lopez winner that essentially clinched the league. Um, so. So yeah, guys. Um, all right, last one. Really, last one this time. Do you think the the case of Huang, the Bordeaux striker, is still possible? Look, we we talked to people. We talked to our sources. They told us the deal was done between Nottingham and Olympiacos. The morning that day, that 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 story broke. So we had we had our sources tell us that that story was true. There was an element of um, the player still needing to agree. The player was unsure. He was a bit hesitant to come to Greece. We knew that. Does that change next Thursday when we're in the Europa League, hopefully, when we're in the group stages, when that's confirmed? It's a good striker. Huh? There's a player that played for a team that was relegated and scored 11 goals. So um, I would like to see that kind of player. I think that would be a good signing, yeah. And with that, guys, it's it's nearly it's nearly 12:30 local time, 1:30 in Greece. We've had people from the US, Greece, all over the world, Poland, wherever you are, Korea. People from Korea were in today. Um, thank you so much for joining again, guys. Like before you go, if you haven't hit that like button, it doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps us. We really value and appreciate all the support you guys uh, give us. Uh, thank you for helping us grow the community, giving us the strength to keep going, making this channel bigger and better with every episode. Our next big target is to get to 2,000 subs. We're getting closer and closer. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell as well, and we'll be back. Don't forget, Labros Sirmos and Ari are going to be in Greece this weekend. For the next three games, they'll be at the uh, at the game against Bas. They'll be at the Apollo game. Shoot us some messages on on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever you follow us. Gate Seven Intl. That's it for tonight, guys. Thanks again. We're Gate Seven International. I'm Costa. This show is by the fans, for the fans, and see you next time. Oh, pour pas, Jésus, pas, mais pas.